Now that we've spent some time talking about some basic data sources and an overview of housing markets, let's look at how we get a gut sense of what the supply is and will be in a market. First off, as we discussed before, housing starts, building permits, construction dollars, sales of existing homes, those are good barometers for a current housing supply. Obviously, the relative cost of land, capital, the ability for people to get the financing they need, there are other determinants and are a large part of why the country experienced a downturn in 2008. However, we might start with many of these. Now keep in mind, we as planners deal with other determinants, including zoning, building codes, entitlement risk. The requirements that we put on projects many times are those other determinants that either constrain or help housing supply. It's the area where our practice as city and regional planners impacts that of market-based developers and people that are bringing housing product to the market. How might you estimate housing supply and conditions? Well, you could look at permits, uh, issued permits, units under constructions, and then finally, what products are reaching the markets? What is the number of completed units that are being put available for purchase? So how do we get a good sense for that? I have four easy steps. Look at the inventory, decide whether or not it's excess or constrained, predict how long that condition might be continuing, and then estimate and analyze what the implications might be to future home prices. Is it a good time to invest? Do we anticipate more housing product will be coming to our city? I'll show an example from San Luis Obispo. This is from the National Association of Realtors, and it's why the real estate industry and local realtors can be a great asset to local planning departments and planners. Here you'll see the number of units and the estimated months of supply. Now we usually assume that four months of supply is about right, and you can see here that in 2011 and 2012 um, there was about that. In, in the city of San Luis Obispo, which is the lens that we're looking at, in the town where I teach. However, during 2013, we saw that continue to dip. The trend at the beginning of 2013 was as such that only one month, maybe two to three months of supply were available, and it had been like that for a couple of months. Now, going back to our list of how we might deal with ex estimating supply, if we know that the supply is constrained, and we can predict that it's been going on for six months and may continue for another six months to a year, what are the implications for housing prices? Well, in this case, as in many cities in California, there's been an equal spike in housing prices. Let's go look at some data sources now on the internet that actually support that. As we talked about before, there's a variety of real estate sites that we can go to to get market-based information. Here's Marques and Millichap, and we'll, we've clicked on their local office reports. It goes from national to local apartment, local office, local retail. So let's click on the local apartment market for San Francisco. You'll see here a brief synopsis that says that rental rates are going up and rents are healthy. This means that vacancy is down and that construction has been in a hiatus. The market has responded and produced 3,400 additional units, which is much higher than in previous years to meet this increased demand. You can get similar information, both commercial and residential, from places like Cushman and Wakefield, CBRE, and here I've pulled uh, the local reports for CBRE. Uh, I've gone to their research pages and went to their research center, uh, gone to US reports, uh, local reports, and then under local reports, all the reports are listed in chronological order. 
uh, with these fancy little drop downs I could actually search for them however I find it easier to search on my website so I'll just type control F and I'll search for Oakland I'm interested in what's happening there so if we were to continue and download either of these we would get a PDF that would illustrate what the Oakland market was uh, was doing right now likewise we could go to any of these other sites and get data for example here's the um, Newmark Grub, Knight and Frank site. If we go to US market reports and then click on our desired market, for example, if I'm interested in the market in Detroit, you'll see here that I get a, a variety of uh, market conditions in Detroit. If I'm interested in um, the kind of the office trends in the third quarter, you can see I have different quarters. I can download a PDF uh, for the office trends. Now, w why would I care about office trends? Well, many times they would track um, if there's growth in the office sector in terms of real estate, there's going to be growth in the housing sector. So, um, again, uh, good look, good to look at places like Marcus Millichap, uh, uh, Grub and Ellis, uh, or Newmark Grub, Knight and Frank, uh, CBRE, Cushman Wayfield, uh, those types of sites, uh, to get your data to make your judgment about supply. Where do you think you'll be going in the future? Then you can go to the demand side, which is where we'll go next as a part of Chapter 4. Keep in mind, however, that when you do this, it's always supplanted by on-site data reconnaissance. Here's an example from a recent trip that I took to San Francisco. You'll notice with this on-street site that I was scanning for the streetscape, looking for what was happening at the base of the buildings, and you'll see that there's a lack of investment in certain places around the street. And this has a direct impact to the valuation of what's happening upstairs. However, that said, in this location, particularly there's a pocket park or what's being called an informal park or parklet that's been made out of the street and you'll see here that each of these platforms are in pots and can roll away to where this becomes an accessible transit route in the case of an emergency a train or fire truck could go either direction it's this type of creative and spontaneous use that we'd want to take into account on the ground when looking at site analysis. Likewise, certain times you'll want to go and evaluate the new housing stock that's under construction that may not be fully completed yet. Information like this, prices starting at 201k and potential pipe, which is condo in this case. This type of information as well as an individual scanning to make an offer can give you good insights about what's happening with the local housing market. Likewise, you'll again want to scan and view are there bike improvements where the bicyclists could be a factor in increasing the accessibility of new housing. Likewise, what types of pedestrian realm improvements are happening? Do we have broken windows? Do we have vacant storefronts? Are the buildings for lease? While they may look nice, they also may be in a location where there's a lack of investment in the street. And there's other stuff that you just may pick up on just randomly, like the pop-up bagel shop or the interesting stuff you're seeing hanging from the tree. It's this type of thing that you won't pick up on unless you're on the ground doing site reconnaissance, and experiencing the places you're studying. So with that said, make sure you get out, but let's go into some secondary sources with the Census Bureau.